everyone. Welcome to seventh grade ELA. I am Mrs. Williams. Just to tell you a little bit about myself, I've been teaching here at Grove for 14 years. This is my 22nd year of teaching. I've taught sixth, seventh, and eighth grade ELA as well as seventh grade social studies for many years. I have two sons. One is 15 and a sophomore in high school and the other is 11 and he's in the sixth grade this year. And then we also have a new member of our family. Just last week, we got that puppy that you see on the screen there. He's a little Australian shepherd. Okay, I wanted to share with you first the green and gold schedule for, for our time at Grove this year. So we do have a block schedule, as you see here. Kids have four periods a day, and they seem to be adjusting pretty readily to this new schedule. So um, hopefully you have somewhere at home the green and gold schedule to keep the kids on track for which days are which. All right, I wanted to start with what do we, what are our ELA classes look like while we're learning virtually? We do have 50 minute class periods each day. We meet every single day on green and gold days. LA meets every single day, whereas their other classes only meet every other day. Um, in language arts, we do have, we do use a reading or writing workshop format for instruction, which means that I deliver a mini lesson every day where I'll teach the kids a reading or a writing strategy. We have time for guided practice, either in partnerships, small groups, or together as a whole class. Once the kids are comfortable and feeling confident, then they're off for independent, independent practice time. We do have live instruction each day where I model that reading and writing or writing strategy. We have time usually for small group or partner work or even that independent practice in that 50 minutes. And this next slide just demonstrates that even if we go to in-person learning at some point, like maybe in November, class will look exactly the same. We're still going to have 50 minutes of ELA every single day, green or gold schedule. I'm still going to use that reading or writing workshop model and deliver a live lesson every day. And kids will have time to meet in small groups or partnerships and have some independent work. The only difference might be a little bit more individualized conferring opportunity if we're here together in class. I wanted to mention the differences between what we're doing this fall and last spring. I know there was some concerns about things um, going on last spring. And the first thing I wanted to mention is last spring when the stay at home order happened, we were forced into this remote learning experience um, and we had to just sort of react to this new situation. Whereas now in the fall, we've had a chance to be way more proactive. We've had months and months to plan and prepare for what this virtual learning experience might look like. As you know, we have a block schedule this fall that kids need to follow a daily schedule. Um, we do have live lessons every day, which was not necessarily the case last spring. Kids have a chance to meet in small groups um, or even have some individualized instruction this fall, which wasn't always the case last spring. We do have grades, which is also different and increases the accountability. And we have attendance that's taken every day. So kids need to be in class every day. Here's what we're going to be learning this year in seventh grade. We do start with what we call a launch unit, which is just kind of getting kids back into good habits and routines of reading and writing. And then from there, we're going to do some review of nonfiction reading skills and informational writing skills based on possibly some gaps they might have from last spring. So we're going to assess where kids are at and we're going to meet their needs um, in terms of that from last spring's instruction. Then we're going to move into a characterization unit. Actually, it's, it's really an author study unit. We study authors and we look at the ways that they build complex characters. And then we take everything we learn from that reading unit and we apply it to a realistic fiction writing unit where kids will take what they learned about how to build characters and they'll implement that into their own writing when they draft and create a realistic fiction story with those deep characters. Then we go into a nonfiction unit where we study like the essential skills needed for good research. And from there, we go into an argumentative essay unit. And then we wrap the year up with a, a, a final fiction unit where we analyze fiction. Um, and then the final product of the year is we create companion books where kids kind of pull together everything they know about writing. They use all the different genres of writing. There's tons of choice in that unit. And it's actually a really fun writing unit to wrap up our year. 
homework so you know what might be expected at home at night. Um, I am expecting kids to read for at least 30 minutes every day. During that reading time, I might ask them to write on sticky notes or jot their thinking in a notebook so they can keep track of what they're reading and thinking about and then come back to class the next day and share. There might be some word study work or STEM work that's done during that time. In terms of writing, there could be drafting that's done for homework at night, maybe an occasional free write. Um, I do expect kids to continue reading even when we're in a writing unit so that they are continuing you know, to practice their reading um, during, those, during that writing time. And then last but not least, we're going to use No Red Ink this year for some grammar review and practice. And you might be seeing that at home for homework as well. Grades are broken down into four categories. We have formative assessments, summative assessments, homework, classwork, and participation. And grades will be posted weekly in Skyward. So make sure that you are checking those grades and to make sure that your son or daughter is keeping up with assignments. First couple of weeks, we talked a lot about virtual expectations. Now that we're meeting every day on Zoom, I wanna make sure that it's a very safe and comfortable environment for all kids. Um, so we talked about what that should look like what we should see on screen, not see on screen, what, you, what they should be doing as an active participant in that virtual classroom. We also talked about how to access books. Now that they're not in school and they don't have access to our library right here every day, we talked about places they could get books. So one possibility might be the Elk Grove Public Library, if that's a possibility for your family. We also have Access 360 and Sora, which give kids access to digital books and audiobooks. Um, New ZLA is a great resource, especially for nonfiction texts. And then lastly, we have something new this year, which is curbside pickup. And this is going to be going on the entire time that we are in remote learning. So curbside pickup um, is offered to kids. We talked about this in class, so they should know how to do it. And there's also these same directions and additional directions in our Google Classroom if they ever should forget. But with curbside pickup, kids can go to Destiny Discover and they can reserve up to four books and keep those books for up to four weeks. Then you come between eight and 2.30 to pick up the books. And when you arrive at school, you just pull up to door three, which is the library side over by Queen of the Rosary. And you call the numbers that you see on the screen and the librarians will bring the books right out to you. And the kids can keep them, as I said, for up to four weeks. So that's another opportunity if you're looking for ways to get books. All right, ways that you can help your child to be successful this year. Encourage them to read 20 minutes minimum, 30 minutes ideal every single night. Talk to them about reading and what they're learning in school so that they know that it's valued and important. Um, help them to stay organized. Make sure that they have the supplies they need and charge that Chromebook every night because it does take a lot of charge out of the device to be on Zoom or Google Meets all day. Help them to find an organizational system. I gave them a digital organizational system that we're using weekly to record um, homework and other assignments. And they can use that one for all of their classes. But if they don't like that, if they prefer something, you know, handwritten, maybe they want a paper, like a, an organizer or an, um, something that they can keep right next to them um, while they're learning and maybe write it down paper pencil style, but find a system that works for them so that they can keep track of those assignments. Um, help them to get into good school routines. Find a place to learn. I'm sure you've thought about that already even before school began. Where are they going to work every day? Make sure they get a good night's sleep and stay on top of their schoolwork. Check Skyward often. And of course, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. The best way to contact me is either email. Here's my classroom number. Feel free to reach out at any time. Down below, you'll see my office hours. Teachers at Grove have office hours Mondays and Fridays from 150 to 250. You can contact any of us during that time. And on green and gold days, you'll see my personal um, office hours as well. So feel free to reach out at any time that's convenient for you. Thank you for coming tonight. <laughs>